I'm feeling good this morning with a cup of joe. Do, 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 do. Good this morning, chimera doesn't blow. Do, 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 do. I, I was that just, was pretty spectacular. Yeah, that was bad. I am inspired to buy some chimera coffee. On that note, just give the coupon code because they're definitely going to just chime Chi- in. Yeah, chimeracoffee.com. Coupon code show the art of Joan and, and feel like Joan. Ames right now on cloud, on cloud nine. nine, baby. Our next sponsor is inverted gear. Go to inverted gear.com. They have a bunch of gear on there. That's inverted. Um, they sell jujitsu stuff, geese, rash guards, shorts, anything you want to train on the mats. They got it. So go to invertedgear.com, type in the coupon code SHOWTHEART15, and you will save yourself some money. Boom. Boom. (laughs) We're good, man. We're good on all levels. Mm -hmm. Are we recording? We can, yeah. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, on this beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, you're listening to the Show the Art podcast. We're bright. We're up bright and early. Super, super stupid early. Stupid early. Abe, how Yo, you feeling, man? I'm good, man. Is I that feel. Co- what are you drinking? I hope that's coffee. It's not coffee. It's this like green tea from okay. on it with the I bet. with the turmeric and the yeah. You know. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah that, that one. Okay, yeah. yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. <laughs> you need some caffeine, man. What? what? Oh. Let's get right into it, man. Cause uh, we got uh, Mr. Um, Dean Thomas coming up in a, in a bit, but yeah. we couldn't wait, man, because he's coming on in like in a few minutes. But so we're gonna have Dean Tom- Thomas on the phone, guys. We're yeah. gonna do a little post fight with him. Get yeah. get his thoughts. Dean is a uh, uh, UFC veteran, mm-hmm. ex MMA fighter. Now he 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 directed his energy to coaching duties, mm-hmm. and he was cornering Tyron Woodley. On Saturday night at UFC 205 at MSG Madison uh, Square Garden in no NYC, New York City. No big deal. And congrats to um, Woodley, but we're, we'll get into that a little bit later. Yeah. So l- you want to start from like the beginning? Yeah. So w- let's start from the, the very the, the, beginning yeah, because man. the promos for new, for for this this show. Yeah. I thought were great. I yeah, thought dude. my favorite promos, Which and one? I thought they did not get it wrong. They got it right. When they made, they had two promos. Okay. One with Jay Z on it. True. And another one with Nas on it. Oh, I missed they that one. They hit it on the bone. Motherfucker, I missed that they one. They hit it on the bone. Damn, they, they hit it on the bone. They, they tapped that nerve, spinal tap. They tapped that. Kaboom! B- right on that boner. All right. Oh, wait a minute. Hold up. Put your finger back up. Your left hand, dude. You got the official uh, ring tonight, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, had, yeah. you have something special over the weekend? So, uh, yeah, no. Saturday was my little, uh, my little brother's uh, birthday. Well, his birthday cool. was something. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, shout out to your brother. What's his name? Omar. Omar. Shout Big out to seven. Him. Yeah. What's up? What's, what's up? What's All up, you Big seven-year-olds out there, get your game up. He's get coming. Your game tight. All right, yeah. Let's get into it. Kid just got an Xbox. <laughs> where, where you at, seven-year-old? <laughs> Xbox. Yeah. Xbox 360. Yeah, so let's move on to the Jim Miller Tiago Alves Ooh, fight, Alves. man. Alves. I'm sorry. So this fight is very interesting because Tiago uh, claimed that he had po- food poisoning a week ago, uh, which makes sense. If you mm-hmm. did have food poisoning, that would fudge up your yeah. your weight cutting, uh, you know, issue. Mm-hmm. So he missed weight. But he weighed in first. Yeah. So when you miss weight, according to New York, uh, you know, State of Athletic Commission, you have to be within seven pounds yeah. of your oh, I opponent. It was five. Okay. It's either five or seven. Yeah, I think it's seven. I thought it was five. Yeah. I think it's seven. Yeah. Whatever. You have to be within a certain amount of weight. So like a G. Like a G. So Jim Miller, uh, Tiago Alves missed weight. He weighed in first. So they told Jim Miller, "Listen, Tiago missed the weight. All you have to do is just rehydrate now. Start gaining weight." Yep. So that the fight is on. And he's like, okay, cool. Um, Tiago, you know, has to give 20% of his purse, but yeah. the fight's still on. Thank goodness, man. Because yeah. that would, like, uh, props to, to Jim Miller. He didn't have to if he didn't want to. But yeah. he wanted that fight. He's always a game fighter. That's what I always um appreciate about Jim Miller. And he just, like, I don't know if there was the weight cut or that, that food point they are saying, but he was taking Tiago around for rides, yeah. man. Just like a little carousel ride. Grappling clinic, man. Dude, man, he looked good. And... Tiago's the one that's coming down mm-hmm. a weight class. Yeah. So that's pretty impressive. Not the only one where we saw like 
a lot of wrestling, and we'll we'll talk about that later on. But props to Jim Miller, man. Yeah, Jim Miller is is a legend in New Jersey. Yeah, man. Um, he's been fighting for a long time, mm-hmm. and he most wins at a uh, lightweight. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he's proved himself for sure. Mm-hmm. I was about to say that. So, you know, he's a good opponent. He he's, you know, I don't know if he's looking for a title run, but. Yeah, it doesn't matter because he's he's a great fighter. Yeah, you ask him to fight, he's gonna do it. He's gonna bring the fight. You can always count on him to mm-hmm. to put on a good performance. Yeah, yeah. If he could string along a few more wins, because that that's that's just stacked over there, yeah. man. It's gonna be hard to yeah. It's yeah. gonna be a, a tough climb, but if he sure. gets it, you know, props to him. Yeah, I know a couple people that train with Jim Miller, and they oh. say he's like it's like rolling with a bear. Oh, like man. the guy's just an animal, yeah. strong. You just can't move him. Yeah. yeah, and and uh, what he talked about is like, man, the consistency. He was like saying, coming in six days a week for nine straight months. Like, man, not a lot of people could do that, man. Yeah. Not a lot of people have that mentality yeah. to push through. And he, when he says, I'm like, I believe it. Maybe some people like, mm-hmm. ah, kind of suspect. I don't know if you really well, do that. What a lot of people don't realize is if you come in six days a week for nine months straight, mm-hmm. that doesn't mean that every single day you come in, you're busting your butt, yes. killing yourself. Yeah, no, yeah. some days are maintenance Mm -hmm. low-key days and other days are hard days yeah um but it's like you said the mentality of just getting there even if it's a low-key day consistency man just coming you could imagine if you put your your mind or you you dedicate yourself for nine months six days a week doing anything you'll be good at it doesn't matter if you could have like a 10 percent like of them being bad days but like the consistent of you just going in day in day out everything's like clockwork yeah man. i always i always thought like the best you know a good way to get good at something especially jujitsu mm-hmm. what i tell some of the students is listen guys if you can only come in two times a week that's yeah, okay but yeah. you got to spend more time being exposed to whatever you're trying to get good at so if i can't get here to learn on the mats and, yeah. and be physical with with my learning i need to Learn some other way. I need to expose myself so some other way, and that's true, true. watching fights, watching matches, yeah, man. studying the game, writing down my game plan, whatever it Be, is. Being a student, being, being a, student, a student in the game, expose yourself for a long period yeah. of time. So if I can spend five days a week, you know, or spend three days a week studying jujitsu, and mm-hmm. then two days a week on the mats, actually, that's five days yeah. exposed to jujitsu, yeah. thinking about jujitsu, learning jujitsu, trying to get better at jujitsu. Mental it, reps, man. That's rep. like, I do that a lot, whether in jujitsu or can't weightlifting. Tell. No, you should, you shouldn't jackass, but uh, <laughs> it, it, it does help out a lot. Like, uh, thinking imagining how it's going to go down like when you practice a move or something you just learned it you it kind of transfers sure. through yeah it absolutely. does man i mean yeah, and man. that's that, that's not bro science that's like yeah. actual factual science yeah it's uh show the art science so let's actual let's move right, right along man uh vicente luque I texted yeah. against Bilal Muhammad. Yeah. I texted Abe. Remember the name and the <laughs> moment. The moment I texted that he 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 replies back, ha ha. Yeah, Luke knocks him out. Boop. You mean Bilal knocks out Luke? No, no, no. Luke locks, knocks out. That's Bo- what I meant. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I was yeah. like, wait, no, no, no. I'm Hold pretty on. sure. Yeah, so but what? the moment I text it, boom, he he knocks uh, Muhammad out, man. And remember the yeah, name. Yeah, he, he's going to remember your name, all right? Damn. Damn, it looked like it almost like the way he dropped, kind of reminded me of like the Machida. Oh, no, no, the Rashad, like a stanky the, the leg. Stanky. Yeah, the, the stanky leg type the of thing. The infamous Rashad yeah, stanky man. leg. I'm just making sure. That no, no, go ahead. Yeah. I know. No, keep talking, man. But um, yeah, because me and uh, Ames, we had a thing going. We were picking fights, you know, um, looking at each other, or or talking to each other, trying to figure out who's gonna win. Yeah. And uh, I picked Vicente early. Yeah. You know, before the fight, because I watched both guys fight before this, and I just thought Vicente looked like a a world beater. And he uh, he is. Yeah. From what that is the first time I seen a fight. Oh my god. Who who do you, who does he have uh, cornering him? He's lightning man. Um. I forgot. Uh, don't ask me questions that I don't know. What You're making me look bad. You're supposed to be like my go-to. You're Sorry. S- You're supposed to be <laughs> like like my supplier yeah. of of this stuff, man. Sure, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, moving on. So uh, <laughs> remember the name. Yeah, re- yeah remember it, all right. Yeah. But I, I hope he comes back. But let's let's give props to where props to Bilal. Yeah. They He's don't call him the body for nothing. <laughs> yeah. The guy's chiseled. He's just yeah. like a rock. Yeah. Speaking of chisel, Tim Boach. Tim Bosch, oh man, coming in, man, coming in the clutch. So yeah, this is good, good for him. How, so how did how did he how did he win? The Tim knockout? Bosch? Yeah, oh, 
What do you what do you catch him with? Tim Bosch. Man, there was so that's the crazy thing. There's so many fights. Yeah, there was yeah, there was a lot going on. Like right now I'm trying to remember yeah. <laughs> what he caught. Uh, oh no, I think a uh he like a sneak hook at the cage. Yeah. yeah. It was one of those like yeah, it just it looked like a like not a grazing hit, but uh-huh. just like a nice little love tap, and yeah. he went down, man. Yeah, he caught him. Natal and yeah. Natal is no slouch, man. Yeah, man, that's what I'm saying. So Natal could fight. Yeah, so pr- yeah, he he dropped him. Yeah. I think yeah. I think it was a right hand. It was it was definitely a right hand. You, you think so? Yeah. No, it was a, it. It seemed like I remember. Th- it was yeah, a like hook. a grazing right hand. You sure. Yeah, with the right. It's okay. A hook, well, but it's either right. way. Yeah. Uh, Tim Boach wants so any thoughts on that? Um, you know, Tim. Tim, he came off a long layoff, I believe. Mm-hmm. I think he was injured. Mm-hmm. I picked Natal, but yeah, we only both did. Uh, we were. Yeah. Oh, I was like, Shit. oh, I came into right before <laughs> this, like zero oh, and four. Yeah, <laughs> this, this wasn't a good card for yeah. me. <laughs> and here's the thing, too. I picked uh, Chukagian. Uh, you know what? I realized after the card was over, two <laughs> yeah. things. One, I like I like to make a lot of bold predictions, yeah. not necessarily the most. Um, I don't know historic predictions. Yeah. Like, all right, you don't pick the chalk, like the chalk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was trying to look in deep. Yeah, so that's one mm-hmm. that doesn't always work out well. Which I did the same. Two, I didn't enjoy watching the fights. Ah, because all I'm thinking about is did I get this one right? <laughs> yeah, did I dude. get this one right? <laughs> is my pick gonna w- yeah. wind up being good? Like it was. <laughs> I mean, after a while, I just forgot about it. Yeah, I was like, all right, I'm done worrying about yeah. that shit. Yeah. So after we went zero and five, I yeah. was after we went zero no, and picked, four. I was like, I picked I, Luke, so I wasn't okay. okay yeah. yeah, I didn't. You did. So uh, <laughs> right after that, I was like, ah, you know what? Let's but let's keep it moving. It's not enjoyable anymore, yeah, right? Yeah. You kind of it's like, it's fun, but not fun. If you're winning, I bet you. If we're winning that contest, fun. it's like, yo, this is great. We got to do this every time. Yeah. But since we did, I'm like, ah, I, yeah. I, I don't have to do this. Uh-huh. We don't, we don't, we don't need this yeah. in our life. Uh-huh. Yeah, we got enough stuff to do. So sure. let's 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 move it right along because it's the one I was most excited to talk about. Khabib. Before. Yeah, man, what a clinic. He is Habib Nurmagomedov versus yeah. Michael, Michael Johnson. Johnson. Man, it just um, I, I was listening to his post fight interview. They're saying like the. The the plan was to take him down and of take him to the ground, but I, uh, Khabib was talking about like how he kind of wanted to stand up at first, mm. but then I think once he felt those hands, because Michael Johnson, well here's the thing, Michael Johnson knew that it would only be a matter of time before Khabib tried to take him down. Yeah. So I believe that the strategy was let's try to go balls to the wall mm-hmm. with and, the and, striking and finish it and try yeah really yeah. try to take advantage. Be, be, I, yeah, because once the wheels start turning for Khabib and he wants to take you down, it's a wrap. Yeah, it's man. a wrap, man. You can't stop it. So after that first that that it was a it was a mauling, man. It looked like it really reminded me. I was telling Abe a while ago. It reminded me of like Brock Lesnar yeah. when he was controlling Mark Hunt uh-huh. or even like Frank Mir that but, type of thing. But honestly better man yeah no absolutely yeah. man he did that one thing where he kind of got him a crucifix he would hit him under <laughs> yes. his leg and like love tap him whatever yes. so man, he's just the way he was surfing neon belly and uh. then transitioning and beautiful, the, i love man. how he trapped him against the fence and mm-hmm. then reached underneath and gr- and trapped the wrist oh. so now you can't turn away out and he, the only way you could turn is towards the mat yeah and if you turn towards the mat you're you yeah. can't block your face yeah so he, it was massive. It, yeah, man, man. and it, yeah. two times for the first two rounds. Like, yeah. what a freaking clinic! And then he, he that he put on, he man. Camorred him in the third. Yeah, I was cr- I I turned away because I thought he was gonna rip his his shoulder out. Oh, really? Dude. I think I think Michael Johnson was like, all right, I'm not getting out of this, and I'm not winning this yeah. fight. Like, I'm done. Yeah. What am I gonna do? Yeah. Uh, uh, Khabib even talked about like he go, he was like, this is a fight, but he he basically said he's not trying to injure anyone, so he went really slow. He was like. Yeah. I mean, look at dude that thing. Yeah. That Kimura was tight. Yeah, I I was like, no, nah, I'm not gonna watch him rip because I wasn't sure if Michael Johnson was mm. gonna try to like his not his ego, but like he didn't his, his heart, heart, his heart, yeah. his heart his, wasn't getting the way. No quit, but, yeah. pff, oh my god! But man. Michael Johnson, man, he had moments. He yeah. he kind of rocked Khabib. He did in the first round. Khabib could say all he wants, but his legs were a little shaky. Yeah, no, they were, yeah. man. I think that's what he realized. Oh, let me stick to the game plan. My coaches know they know better, but. Uh, just Khabib looks like a tank, man. Yeah. His lower body. Yeah. It's just he just the way when him and when him and Michael Johnson were like toe to toe. Yeah. It, it, just it looked, looked like, like a difference. It looked like a big size difference, man. Sure. So, but m- props to Michael Johnson. He was game. Mm-hmm. Like he, uh, what I like about him, he would get tapped 
two times when Khabib had that that wrist control. Yeah. One, two, he'd get back up so the ref wouldn't stop it, and he would. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yes. Yeah. Some people were asking like the the part I was with, like, why don't they stop him? Like, no, he's still. He's still moving. Yeah, he's still it's moving. It's just a hard position to get out because yeah. your wrist is trapped. And what he did a couple times to get out of that, mm-hmm. which people don't normally do. I mean, unless you've been training jujitsu a lot, yeah, like, and you understand that that factor of the game, is slow escapes don't always work. Mm. And w- especially when your wrist is trapped like that, yeah. you have to do like a like a hard like you know random freak move. Like yeah. you kind of have to like just explode and try to explode your arm out and and explode your wrist out and then true. and turn your body hard. Mm-hmm. You can't just try to pull it out slowly. You're not gonna get it out. I guess some, especially against someone like him, man. Sure, <laughs> he's a freaking yeah. tank. So so I mean that was a perfect example of stick to the game plan mm-hmm. don't try to listen if you want to stand with the guy and strike with the guy yeah play your game plan first get him worried about the other thing yeah get him man. worried about what everybody thinks you're going to be doing because that that could have that, that could have been like michael johnson's fight because he caught him a, a few times michael johnson almost yeah. won that fight. yeah he almost did man I th- that's the one i called i, w- I really wanted that one <laughs> i'm like this is the one that's like kind of yeah. out of left field that like everyone yeah. just expects khabib to win and michael Ah, damn man. And that's the thing. If you won, if you if Michael won, mm-hmm. it's like no, I I told you guys like that's yeah, a bold prediction. Yeah. It's actually fun, more yeah. fun to make those bold yeah. predictions. You 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 sound like a genius. When, yeah. yeah. So, but um, do you have any thoughts on his post fight interview, Khabib? Uh, yeah, I thought it was masterful. Mm-hmm. His approach, it was it was genuine. Yep. And it was still respectful, mm-hmm. but it was like it was like um WikiLeaks. Oh uh, yeah, you know what <laughs> I'm saying. I felt True. like he was like Julian Assange. What's going on? Yeah, yeah, he was just kind of like you know the there's you know the power of the UFC PR team mm-hmm. is amazing. Yeah, so I'm gonna do my thing right now. Like I'm exposing you yeah. guys. Yeah. All you guys are giving. And then they were, he was talking about Connor and yeah. and how he lost like a yeah, chicken. He, he <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> he tapped like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> He's like Irish people, six million. Russian people, one hundred. Basically, we rolling million. deep, man. Yes. So give me my fight. But everything was true. He was. He was just very candid. Just fr- he's a frustrated fighter, probably like f- feeling used because yes. they're giving him like contracts that they know. Uh, he's no one's gonna sign for him. They just use him as a little scape, not a scapegoat, but like you know what I mean, yeah, like a selling tool. tool yeah, yeah a selling tool. Sure. Exactly. So man, he deserves a fight. Mm-hmm. It's this this fight is gonna remind me of like not really, but it's like Rocky versus um Dolph Lundgren. Yes. Like he's coming. Like it's gonna be that kind of feeling. Like like you know Connor's a champ. He's great, but man, the the guy coming after him is a hungry, yes. scary fighter, yes. man. And this is everyone's. You know, you fight a guy like Connor, right? Mm-hmm. A, a guy like Connor, a guy like Anderson Silva, yeah. a guy like uh, John Jones, John Jones, not even John Jones, but yeah, John Jones, for example. Those guys are what masters yeah, on the feet. Like virtuos. You want to take those guys down. You don't want to. You might be able to go toe to toe with them somewhat mm-hmm. and and be kind of successful. Yeah, it, it's rare that it could happen. But you want to take them to where they're weaker. Yeah, and that's the ground. Yeah, and. Khabib is the guy that will guarantee you he's, he's going to the ground. You. Yeah, man. Guarantee you. Yeah. So, like, we thought Eddie Alvarez would try to take it mm-hmm. to the ground, and he said he would. But Eddie's fights aren't always like that. Like, yeah. He likes to brawl. He likes to go everywhere. So it, when when he lost, it wasn't surprising to me that he got lulled into the stand-up true, game. True, true. You know, I was, I was kind of expecting him to go for more takedowns, but... He got lulled in. Yeah. Khabib will not get lulled into the striking, nah. especially after Michael almost hurt him. Yeah, he'll I, he'll probably stick to the plan. He'll probably I wouldn't be surprised if he tried to test him out again. But well, either Khabib? way, this is gonna be yeah. No, I think Khabib yeah. learned from that man because yeah. he's normally not like that. What Khabib, what Khabib needs to do is take a page out of George St. Pierre's book. Yeah, that's true. His blueprint. Yeah, get him thinking about the takedowns because you're taking them down, mm-hmm. and then you can open up and, and then strike. you could rock the hell yeah. out of him, man. But that's gonna be a fun fight. Yeah. Do you do you see anyone else even having like a like Tony Ferguson? Tony Ferguson has a chance because he's on a winning streak as well. Yeah, but, but this performance, man, yeah. this fight, this win streak that yeah. he's on, I I don't see how you could deny him. Yes. Like either way, it's a dangerous fight for for Conor McGregor. Uh-huh. Like there's two like well deserving contenders after him right now. So yeah. like I I. I'd be kind of mad if Tony Ferguson got it, but it's like at the end, I'm like, you know what? At least he's deserving <laughs> yeah. of it. Just like like when Woodley um, got his chance at the the welterweight championship against um, Robbie Lawler. Yeah. Like it's like he. I'm not like I didn't see him 
like getting that that um that title opportunity, mm-hmm. but I'm not mad that he he got it. You know what I mean? It's it's yeah. it's, it's one of those moments. Sure. So um uh, moving on, we got this is the, uh there's only two fights that I actually missed, so I need you to fill me in. With no. it, um I missed the yeah, the Frankie Edgar Jeremy Stevens. Really? Yeah. Uh. Yeah, yeah. So so what did I miss? You missed the good fight, man. Did I miss um, hard? What, what was like the? It was a classic Frankie fight where ah, okay. he was he was Did controlling he get, the ring, uh-huh. um, Gets landing rocked. shots when he yeah, and he got rocked like I believe it was the end of the second. Oh oh damn! End of the second somewhere somewhere around there. But then he you know he exp- he he got his expo he got exposed his well, exposure he, his composure sorry oh. he got his com- he gained his composure again okay there you go and then um you know he did his thing okay. jeremy stevens just seemed to be a little too uh, not slow but just at the end of the punch you know uh, frankie was just I controlling it controlling it controlling yeah, it yeah 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 on that note we're calling him up dean thomas is ready to be called uh, so. so all right guys we're going to get dean thomas on the line right now Dean, Dean, how are you? I'm good, man. What's happening? Yeah, can you hear me? I'm at the airport. I hope it's not too loud. I'm at the airport. <laughs> no, it's, it sounds pretty good. What's going on, man? How you doing? What's happening? What's going on, y'all? Well, Dean Thomas, welcome to the Show the Art podcast. This is your second time on. We really appreciate you coming on. It's a big day. It's a big day for time you. To kick in. First things first, congratulations to your boy, Tyron Woodley. Well, it was sort of a win, yeah. but sort of not a win. Yeah. They yeah. declared it a draw. Yes. But, um,. You know, we we thought we won. We thought we did enough to win the fight. He gets to keep the belt. They're mm-hmm. going to rematch, and I think next time will be a little easier for him to establish himself. Now, is this confirmed that it, there will be a rematch? Well, Dana said it last night that there will be a rematch. Okay. Um, I mean, with that doesn't mean anything. You know, you know how the game is. But <laughs> yeah, man. He'll say one thing, and then the next day he'll say something else. So <laughs> yeah. it's hard to say. Sure, sure, sure. It was a iffy call because some people on the scorecards thought that. The fourth round would have been a ten eight round. How did you score the fourth round for Woodley? I scored it. I, I scored the fourth round at ten eight. Yeah. yeah and the reason why, you know, here's the thing though. Like in boxing, it's an automatic point deduction if you knock the guy down. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily agree with that in MMA, but <laughs> he knocked him down Badly. three times yeah, in that round man. and had him in a deep choke, almost finished him. Yep. So to me, that that constitutes a ten eight. Sure, I agree. I agree, and and a draw was a good call. Um, now, he he fought a well well composed fight. Um, was that part of the game plan coming in to to kind of stay at the end of of uh, of Thompson's punches and kicks? Well, no. I mean, we have you know one thing that we do between me and Duke is we put together multiple game plans for a fight mm-hmm. depending on the situation. So I mean, you know, but. And we, we try to execute what we need to execute for those moments. And when Tyron was able to get off, he was able to get off. And Wonder Boy's a good fighter. He was able to shut Tyron down at times as well. So, um, I mean, the, the fight is what it was. But I think going forward, you know, for a rematch, it, it told us a lot. I'm sure they may change up some things. But, sure. you know, I saw a lot in that fight that I feel like we could have been able to capitalize on. So, mm-hmm. you know, I thought it was a great fight for the fans. But we're looking forward to a rematch. What I really hated at the end of the fight was was the crowd. That's one thing I texted <laughs> Abe at the end of it. I was going crazy because I don't understand like how you could you could boo Woodley after he gave it his all after he tried to submit. Even he almost got a close submission in the fourth round, and like that that crowd was just totally disrespectful. Yeah. Man, it really got me fired up. Yeah, I was fired up too. To be honest with you, it's like. You know, I'm reading the internet, and the, and to me, it's like the, most of the people on the internet thought it was either a draw or that Woodley won. Yeah. But the crowd seemed to favor Thompson. Uh, yeah. And what really had me fired up was the fact that, you know, at the end of that fourth round, they go, well, Thompson finished on top. Yeah, that's because he escaped the guillotine yeah. that Tyron yeah, initiated. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It wasn't like he swept him and finished on top. Tyron had him in a guillotine, and he just popped his head out and was on top for the last 15 seconds. Yeah, yeah. There's that to me doesn't warrant some type of illicit response from an audience. No, that was, I, okay, I, you you escaped. I, I, absolutely, man. There's no like I you could you could um cheer for for Wonder Boy for sure. for his heart and greatness, but yeah. there's no way it does doesn't make sense how yeah. you could boo Woodley. Well, I believe for his the fans were were cheering for an underdog. That's what was yeah, going on yeah. because he was losing that fourth round badly, 
And, uh, you know, he came out mm-hmm. to the fifth. So I think the fans were, were cheering for an underdog. Do you agree with well, that? Well, I get that. I mean, I get yeah. them cheering at his grit. But but I was hearing, like, some some uh, thoughts that he may have – it may not have been a 10-8 round because he ended up on top of oh, the Oh, that's no dumb. way. Man. I'm like I'm – like, he wouldn't have been on top of Zara getting full guard to try to submit him, yeah. to try to finish the fight. Yeah, there's, there's no way – that wasn't a ten eight round. People man. that say that probably have never trained the day in their life. Yeah, they don't know what it's like to go for a guillotine on somebody and and them escape. Yeah. But you're you've got the momentum of the match in your favor. That's all that matters at the end of the day. Yeah, and 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 props. So, to, yeah, it, it was. Those, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I, I was gonna say props to Woodley because after that fourth round, I got really nervous. Cause I was going for Woodley. <laughs> I got really nervous. I'm like, man, he he was holding on really long. Yeah. So I thought Thompson was gonna kind of take advantage because I thought he was going to be burnt out, but he still kept fighting on. And Yeah, and at that point, like, I knew going into that fifth round, you know, it wasn't any type of instruction that was going to get him through that fifth round. It was just, you know, motivating him. So, I mean, I know you probably couldn't hear, but, uh-huh. you know, in between that fourth and fifth round, I was just like, look, man, you got five minutes. Think about your daughter. Mm-hmm. Think about these type of things because he's an emotional guy, and I know True. that getting uh, the support from his family you know, kind of keeps him strong. So I was trying to bring that family element into that fifth round where yeah, so he wouldn't fade off because Thompson's still dangerous. I mean, Thompson's in shape. He fights very relaxed. So yeah. he doesn't burn a lot of energy. So he's still, all. he's always dangerous in a fight. Mm-hmm. So I was like, man, like, I thought he was winning the fight. And the only thing that for me that could happen was him getting knocked out. So I said, man, you just got to finish this fight. Hopefully he can win this fifth round. But I thought he was winning. I thought he was... I actually thought he won that third round. So uh, that one was like but a I, swing one, yeah, yeah. In the first round, was he um, was he just feeling um, Wonder Boy out, or like trying to save um, save gas in the tank before? Because you know it's gonna go five rounds. What was his? Uh, what was like the main game plan in the beginning? Well, you know the thing with Ty, like I said, we go over. We have between me and Duke, we put together, you know, five to ten different strategies that we want to work. And I think, okay. and then we go, all right. Tyron, you're out there, and we trust you. It's almost like a quarterback. So ah, we trust okay. you. If you want to, uh, you, if you want to audible, go ahead and audible. So when he goes out there and he's doing it, I think he was just trying to get the read I get because, you. um, you know, we, you know, we prepared and we used multiple different guys, and you know, while that style is a puzzle, mm-hmm. he still had to get that read from what mm-hmm. Stephen Thompson would deliver. Now, last thing, I felt that had Woodley. I mean, it was a good decision to go for the guillotine, but. Do you think that had he stayed on 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 Thompson and kept trying to strike him, that would have uh, maybe ended the fight? He still came out on top after the guillotine. But do you believe that maybe next time moving forward, a good strategy could be not to go for for a guillotine in that type of situation, or is it just the feel thing out there and you still trust him? It was still a decision he had to make. Well, I think that was a, a, it was a hasty decision. Yeah, Tyron has a good guillotine, but. So. It was it was still a hasty decision. I don't recommend anybody go for a guillotine, you know, with over a minute left. And uh, I think he didn't realize how much time was left. Had it been thirty seconds, I would have said do it all day. But he had like a minute and a half left, <laughs> maybe even closer to two minutes left. I wouldn't recommend it. That I thought it would have probably been a better idea to maybe spin to his back and get back control and punch okay. him there. Is opposed, and maybe go for the rear naked choke because if you lose a rear naked choke, you're still on the back. Sure. Mm-hmm. But if you lose a guillotine, now you're in your guard, mm-hmm. which is what happened. Yeah. So, you know, that was just a, a hasty tactical error that he made in the, in the moment of the fight. Yeah. And I'm curious, as a jiu-jitsu guy, do you guys go, you know, is Tyron particularly good at, at the arm in guillotine, or was that just what he took that was available? I think that was just what he took with his, with his what was available. Okay. Um, you know, going back, we're gonna you know we're gonna watch the fight, and I'm gonna break it down, and and we're gonna correct every mistake or every error that could have been corrected. Because, mm-hmm. You know, and that's you know that's just the way I think as a coach. You know, people are like, oh, I thought he won, I thought he won, and for me, that's not what was going through my mind. I was okay. like, first off, it was a great fight, and secondly, yeah. we gotta fix we gotta fix what happened. Because like like I'm like a football coach. Like even if we win the game, mm-hmm. if we had too many turnovers, we got to fix that. True. It was obvious that his game plan was very secure, and he stuck with it. A lot of people start to deviate from the game plan when things don't work out. But uh, Woodley looked super composed during the entire fight, super relaxed. I thought he fought exactly the fight he needed to do. Um, and the game is difficult, and I'm sure you know because you've been in it for a long time that 
and this is hard to explain to the critics that that kind of have something to say about every little detail it's you know Woodley's preparing for a Thompson and Thompson's preparing for a Woodley it's not just one side so both guys are preparing for the for for something during the fight and both guys are a little hesitant during the fight because they're waiting for a reaction Mm -hmm. and sometimes when we get both guys waiting for a reaction there's long pauses during the fight of inactivity yeah i mean it's dangerous i mean it's really dangerous especially when you're talking about mma like in boxing that filling out process unless you're dealing with like two mexican boxers i mean there's a filling out process where the guys are just jabbing back and forth Mm -hmm. for the entire first round and you can kind of get away with that a little bit easier in boxing because the gloves are bigger and it's you know it's going to be harder to sneak in a big power shot or you're not yeah. worried about getting taken down. Sure. And MMA, I mean, it's, you know you can get clipped with one little shot yeah. early and then that's the end of the fight. So then you got three months worth of training all down the drain because yeah. you done got a little reckless because you were trying to play to the fans. Yeah, I enjoy the match just because it was a nice little chess match. It's like <laughs> who's going to make that big mistake? Yeah, uh, like it, and it was going back and forth. Like Woodley started opening up with that jab, but then Thompson started coming back with that. I think cross started yeah. like it was just going back and forth. Like I really yeah. wasn't sure who was going to come out by uh, after the the fifth round. Like who was going to win? Well, I, I think like to me, like I'm watching it the same way you guys saw, like a, a mm-hmm. technical chess match. I'm watching this fight, but also trying to see what Tyron needs to do in order to gain to gain favor. Okay. So when everybody's like, man, it was a fight of the night, I'm like, really? Yeah, man. <laughs> like, I didn't, yeah, it's hard for me to be entertained by it because, like, I'm uh, looking at it from a, from a strategic uh, standpoint and trying to see you. how what we can do to win the fight mm. as opposed to just being entertained by the fight. Nah, that makes, that makes total sense. So after this, like, how long does um, Woodley rest? What's his period before he gets back into to training mode, or does he go right back into it Monday morning? Well, I sent him a message on my way to the airport, and I was like, because um, I didn't really get a chance to talk to him last night too much. Cause, okay. You know, it, everything gets really confusing after shows. Like, he goes, like, to do press con- shower and press conferences yeah. and pictures. So I just went back to the hotel, so I ended up sending a message this morning. And I was like, man, listen, if you're not hurt, then, um, you know, let's get back in training right away. True. And he said he's not hurt. So I want him to get back in training right away, and I want to, again, fix those things that maybe – he mm-hmm. made a mistake on and to clarify some things up with him and then let's get right back into it because we know we're going to fight this guy again so let's get yeah, right back man. into it yeah man awesome man and that's how you're going to that's how you're going to remain a champion you get right back into it especially if you're not hurt man so yeah, best of luck to you guys, man, because that was a great fight. I hope sure. well, one thing again that really pissed me off is uh, like the fans took away that moment from Woodley, man. Like kind of, yeah, yeah. That that really. But well, you know what? What's bad about it is the fans have been taking away his moment as a champion, not just that fight. Yeah. So like that didn't really that moment didn't bother him as much. Okay. Because he's kind of immune to it now. I mean, since mm. he became champion, I mean. When you think about becoming a champion, you think it's going to be, get better for you. Okay. Now, it did get better for him in some in some aspects, in many aspects, actually, financially. And, yeah. You know, the city it supports, his city supports him. But the general fans have just turned on him for yeah. some odd reason. I don't I'm not, get I'm it, not sure why. Yeah. And they just they turned on him. and But now he's immune to it. And he's just like, you know what? At the end of the day, they still got to call me champ. Yeah, man. Yeah. Good for him, man. You got to have, I get like, when you're champion, things change, I guess. Like, just like with the Warriors, when they won the championship, now it's, there's a little more hate. Well, especially because Kevin Durant <laughs> is there. But once you become a champion, they kind of want to see you get knocked down. Exactly, so exactly. It is what it is. Now, I wanted to get yeah, your, I mean, I'm sorry, you could go. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I wanted to get your opinion on some of the other fights that, that happened and, and what you see going forward in the division. What did you think about the uh, Yoel Romero versus Chris Weidman fight? Did you have Yoel? going into that fight? Yeah, I actually did have Yoel. Again, I'm a bit biased because, you know, Yoel is a, oh, you know, a cousin to Nate of ours, but, um, but I really do believe in Yoel. I mean, I feel like when Yoel is 100% and he feels like fighting, he just moves forward and, and kind of gets reckless. He's the most dangerous guy in the UFC. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And man. he's the best athlete. And, like, and I don't want to give his athleticism too much credit to take away from his mm-hmm. skill set because he's really a, a mm-hmm. good fighter and a good and a good competitor. Okay. But I, I, I think he's the best guy in the, uh, well, in the middleweight division. He's the best fighter in the middleweight division. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. He is the most explosive guy in the world. He, Forget about the division. Yeah. There's no one that can compare. He's, he's just so explosive to the punch to the to the reaction what i was most impressed by him is that his gas tank w- seemed to be a lot better than in previous fights true that was a knock on him so when you see him coming out in the third round 
and looking pretty good. And then he knocks out Chris Weidman. I think that was one of the things the UFC might have been holding back on him. But since he corrected that, I feel that uh, yeah. that's a good push for him for the middleweight title. I'd have to say, if I was being critical of him, is that he has to find a little bit of a balance because his gas tank did hold up in the third round, but mm-hmm. I think it has to do it because he is he started a little bit slower. Okay. So he's going to have to find a happy medium where he can start a little faster and still be able to hold up in the third round. Sure. Or fifth round if he's fighting for a title. Yeah. That's really difficult. And he has the power in his, you know, the ability to finish fights in the first round. But where do you tell him as a coach to say, hey, you know, maybe maybe don't try to go for the finish in the first round. You have four more rounds to go. Like, how would you coach Yoel in a title fight? Yeah, it's difficult because, like, every when you're coaching an athlete, you have to break them down. Like, I really, like, do an analysis on the athlete that I'm working with and go, all right, you're a different type of fighter, like a fighter like Yoel or even Tyron, like, yeah. They carry so much muscle, so they, they can't fight a Nick Diaz-type style fight. They don't yeah. have that type of muscle. Mm-hmm. So you really have to go, all right, you got to do these certain things and explode when you can. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, but you have to have those moments of explosion, so you have to develop different techniques and, and setups that will allow him to explode. And I think that may be what he's lacking out. He doesn't have anything specific uh-huh. to where he can you know, different setups to where he can explode in on. Mm-hmm. So he's just kind of waiting and looking for him. But he's going to have to create something he can set up and use those uh, moments of opportunity. Sure. I agree with that, and I feel that he can benefit greatly from taking a page out of Woodley's book because they have, you know, similar builds and they have similar, you know, physical attributes. You know, the way Woodley can explode into combination. Out of nowhere. You know, I believe that Yoel can benefit from taking a page out of that book. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, yeah, I mean, those are things that we work on with Woodley is, like, you know, so he doesn't just sit back and wait for opportunities. Mm-hmm. you got to be able to create opportunities and not wait for them. Mm. So, um, you know, and, and you create those things and you figure out what, how, you know, guys are going to react to certain movements that you make. And then when you, they react to the movements, then you explode on them. So, um, yeah, and you're welcome to do some of that because I think he starts a little bit slow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, what's next for UL? I thought he did an awesome job calling out Michael Bisping, <laughs> um, and I love his accent. What do you think? Is that, na- is that the, the language fight? barrier? Yeah, yeah, I thought it was great, too. Yeah, um, yeah I thought it was great. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> considering we don't speak English all that well. Yeah, yeah I thought it was a great do you, call out. Do you not, think, as good as the, yeah. not as good as the Jorge Masvidal call out on t- on Instagram. If you guys haven't seen it yet, i got to give that a shout oh, out. Oh, no. Go to at GameBread. Uh-huh. Yeah, go to Ag Game Bread Fighter and listen to his call out to Donald Cerrone. I mean, that was brilliant. Ooh, okay. I would. So, do you give uh, Yoel the title shot? Is that is that the match to make? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. If you don't give him the title shot, then we're I, I'm gonna have questions. Yeah. Because yeah. he's already beaten Jacare, and he. I mean, who else is there? Luke Luke is hurt. Yeah. He Luke just hurt, knocked yeah. out Chris Wyman. So, who else is there? Sure. He's definitely the most deserving the one. The fact that he did ha- that he does have a win over Jacare means he jumps over Jacare because right now most people were thinking, all right, they're in a tie. They're in a standstill. They're both next. But since he has the win over Jacare, got that tie you got to give him the fight. There's nobody else. As much as Bisping says he doesn't want to fight him. You, you know, what is there? You you have to fight him. But it's not up to Bisping. Bisping yeah. God doesn't own the corporation. He doesn't sure. own the organization. It shouldn't really be up to Bisping. Yeah. Same thing they told Tyron when Tyron said, hey, I want to fight GSP. I want to fight Nick Diaz. It said, it said, I know who you want to fight, and I would love to make that match, but it's not up to you. It's up to us. Mm, so okay. he might not want to fight him, but it's not up to him. It's up to what Dana White said. Yeah. Yeah, man. Sure. And it, it really, you do have to take into account the future, like, the, the future six fights like we can't just book any fight we want it might it might mess up you know the the grand plan that that the matchmakers have you know that's why they set up these fights they have this calculated plan moving forward if this guy wins this guy advances and and so on and so forth so sometimes when you throw a monkey wrench in there it's exciting but other times it, it it just won't work yeah you're right about that i mean i'm sure they got like a little chalkboard in the in the little dungeon of the, <laughs> well, not the Fertitta office no more, but yeah. like yeah. the WME office. Now they got like a chalkboard with a bunch of names on it. Say, this is you know, how we want this to play out. And if this guy wins, this we want this fight. Uh-huh. But um, but I don't care how you slice it. I don't, I don't see how you can maneuver around your well Romero in the title shot. One hundred percent, yeah, man. Now let's talk about the main event real Please, quick. I know you got to go, yeah, man. Before we the head precision, out. the timing, the well, counter punching. Yeah, man. 
I tell you what, if you are in front of Connor and you don't have good movement, <laughs> you're in trouble. You know what I'm saying? Like, and the thing with Eddie is, and I've known Eddie for you know over a decade. I mean, he stayed at my house when he was with, at Bulldog, so I've known Eddie for a really long time. Mm-hmm. And it's unfortunate because Eddie's a legend, and you know, people who that may have been their first time watching him fight, they didn't really get to see yeah. how yeah. good of a champion Eddie really is. But man, he, you know, he may not be in his his best days to fight a guy like Conor, and he Ooh. may not ever have because he is. And he never really had the greatest defense. Okay. And when you're dealing with a guy like Connor, who's so precise and who's so sharp with his punches, I mean, his that left hand might be the most. De- <sighs> yeah, it's it devastating, most, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to say. Yeah, it, it might be the most interesting weapon in yeah. MMA. That his left hand. You like, know, what, like, what's in his glove? That's what I was at. Like, because he puts people to the mat every huh. time he connects. It's like really that timing. Yeah, but it's not. It's. Here, I mean, I'm telling you what he does. Here's, I mean, he gets guys out of position uh-huh. with his movements, and then he just touches you in the right spot. Yeah. He, it's like throwing darts. You know what I'm <laughs> and everybody gets on my case because I say, because I, I made the mention that he's not a power puncher. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have a lot of power. And when I say that, I'm not saying he doesn't have power. Yeah. What I'm saying is that he's so precise and he doesn't need power. Yeah. Mm, okay. He's like, he's hitting the bullseye every time because he's looking exactly what he wants to hit, sure. and he hits you with that with such precision and his body in the right spot mm-hmm. and he's catching guys out of position and off balance. Yeah. And he's just man. like there's no other reason for it. Like he's like Ed, when he caught Eddie with that shot, Eddie was out of position and yeah. bam and yeah. he just caught him really quick. What's beautiful and he is dropped it. Yeah, what's beautiful is the replay. You you watch it in slow motion, the final he hit him with a four piece to end the fight. And he hit him off of a jab, but when you see it in slow motion the jab just barely like is an inch away from Connor's face, and Connor, you know, does it. He didn't flinch. You could tell he didn't flinch. You could Homeboy see him calm. looking. Yeah, you could the see him looking at time. the chin, and he kind of just, like you said, just got him out of position, and then the counter punches were were directly on point. The four piece didn't didn't even matter. The first one would have been enough. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is it where most guys, you know, are just kind of you know, ducking their head and throwing punches. Mm-hmm. You know, Connor is looking at his target. He's yeah. looking at that chin, and he's so relaxed, and his, his mechanics of a punch mm-hmm. are, are are perfect. You, I mean, I can really say that. His mechanics of throwing a punch are perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So he's getting perfect leverage and maximum amount of power out of his body without having to really waste a bunch of energy. Yeah. So I mean it's I mean it's just it's just been absolutely I mean he was absolutely perfect last night. Yeah. yeah. How intimidating is it for the for the opponent when the man that you're facing looks super calm like yeah. he's like at ShopRite looking for groceries Oof. playing like classical music and pun and on Pandora. Well, the problem is not only that is that when you're a shorter guy, mm. you have to get past his reach and he's that comfortable. Now, if, if Eddie had the reach advantage, he would have been able to do a little more. Okay. But the fact that, I mean, you could see the reach yeah, advantage it was, on yeah. TV. You could see the reach advantage. Mm-hmm. He couldn't get past his just waving that hand in front of him. It was that confused him. Yeah, man. So, you know, have, being so calm and relaxed and then also having the reach advantage. It just, you know, he just puts himself in a position where it's very difficult for people to fight him. Yeah, I didn't even, I didn't even bother looking at the size difference, like uh, pre-fight. Yeah. But when I saw them toe to toe, because I honestly, I'm gonna eat my words, because I thought, I thought Eddie was gonna take Connor for a ride, like uh-huh. the whole time, and just like, because uh, I was thinking if Chad Mendes could take him down at will, I thought why not Eddie, and I thought that was gonna be Eddie's plan, just take him down, kind of maul him, and wait for Connor to make a mistake like he did with uh, Nate Diaz. Yeah, I mean it seemed to be a good strategy, but. You know, I, <laughs> there goes that. I mean, I think that when he got out there, he was um, expecting something different. I think, like you said, that calmness of of Connor mm-hmm. really had an effect on Eddie. Mm-hmm. You know, sure. when he goes out there and he kind of snake charms you into this into this slow fight, and like he's talking all this garbage, and he's got you all wound up, and you go out there and you're all wound up, and then Connor's out there snake charming you, just moving all mm-hmm. smooth and slow. You're confused. Yeah, you don't know what to do. So now you're. Yeah, it looked like Eddie wanted no part of those left hands, man. Like, I mean, who? I yeah. mean, it looked like Eddie was exactly what Dean was saying. He was confused. He couldn't figure it out. Yeah. As soon as he started missing the first couple of shots and and got rocked, 
it was kind of like like I don't I don't know how to enter this castle. Yeah. I feel that after the first knockdown, it was a wrap for Eddie. Yeah. Like, it was hard to yeah, see a was. game plan that would have worked after that point. It was so easy for him to get knocked down. Yeah. And I think even he realized it was so easy for him to get knocked down mm-hmm. that he didn't have much of a chance left in that fight. I mean, it was almost like impending doom. Yeah, I, felt, I, I started to feel bad for him, actually. Like, yeah. Eddie's my man. True. It sucks that he's such a legend and a true champion that he's going to go out like this. I know, man. Yeah. And, and in MSG. But I'm going to throw a, a shot in the dark. Would there be any chance there would be a McGregor... Woodley fight. <laughs> He's too small. I doubt it. He's too yeah. small. It just looked like from all like they were showing him, like man, it looks like they're kind of trying to stir something up. Yeah, and it's Connor. You know, Connor. It's Connor's Connor. You know, what I mean? think Connor will talk about it, but Woodley's much bigger I, than yeah, him. Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, that wouldn't be a really good fight for Connor. I mean, <laughs> yeah. there's a couple of fights that are just not a good fight for Connor. Yeah. And the thing with like Eddie is that Eddie's a bit older. He's kind of shot and. He was never, and he was always very easy to hit. So okay. when Connor's faced with those type of guys that are flat footed and they're really easy to hit, I mean, he's always going to look like a superstar. Mm-hmm. But there's a, there are still a few bad matchups for him, and even in the lightweight division, yeah, I think yeah, there man. are still a few bad matchups for him. We, we were just and talking, I, and yeah, like Khabib is just. Yep, exactly. I think they're going to stay away from Khabib as long as possible. That'd be yeah. a smart move. But how do you stay away from him after that performance last yeah, night? Yeah, man. How can you? Uh, easily, easily. <laughs> you easily. give it to you, Tony you Ferguson. Just, just the same way we do everything else, we distract them with something else. Yeah, true. We put some smoke and mirrors up, some bells and whistles, and we put we put Nate Diaz in front of everybody talking mm. trash, and mm. all of a sudden Khabib, who? Uh, you know, we, we we put Khabib in we put Khabib in there with Tony Ferguson, and that's a great matchup for the for yeah. the enthusiast, the MMA enthusiast, and then we. We settled the, you know, the, the, the Nate Diaz, Connor. Oh, yeah, the Nate Diaz trilogy, you know. That's so true. I didn't even, I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think about the Nate Diaz because yeah. I thought there's no way Connor's not going to fight Khabib after that well, performance. Well, we thought of that before this Eddie Alvarez fight. Mm-hmm. That was always looming. Yeah. But then, like he said, you get distracted by the fight. Yeah. And then, of course, Connor wins. And, and now, what do you think about Connor's future? I mean, he says that. He's he's having a kid soon, and that he has he wants a stake in in the ownership of the UFC. How, what do you think about that? Man, I I just told somebody a few a few minutes ago. Listen, if Connor wants it, y'all need to give it to him because without Connor, this shit sinks. Yeah. And he wasn't lying when he said that. I mean, he made he made some people rich last night. Yeah, that he bad mouth. You yeah, know, but sure. he made them rich, and you know everybody should be happy with what he's doing right now to that sport because without him, you know we're so a lot of us are out of jobs. Yeah, man. I don't want to say out of jobs, but you know, we our futures yeah. don't look as bright without. Him. Sure. Yeah. And it'll be hard to build another star like that. I don't know if we could. You know, yeah. honestly, I don't know if we could because you know part of his stardom comes from an entire country. True. So, I mean, unless we could find another country that needs a start and is willing to support an athlete that way, it's not yeah. going to happen. Yeah, this this whole Conor McGregor thing was like the the perfect storm. Like his his personality, his skill level, the country behind them, mm-hmm. just everything just came at the right place at the right time type of feel. Yeah, it is. Like, like you said, personality, you know, the ability to talk trash, yeah. the intelligence, the brilliance of his trash talk, Absolutely. and then his skill set and the, the fact that you know, there's no, there's the, and even Duke Rufus was telling me that right now, like in Ireland, there's no real stars. There's no, no yeah, major man. soccer player. There's no major boxer. So they needed a star. So yeah, like the man. fact that they have the star, so like all those things converge into this moment. Yeah, and yeah. it's making a lot of people a lot of money. Sure. That's true, man. On that note, I know you got to go, Dean. Thank you for coming on the show. I hope you enjoy your flight. Safe travels. Well, I appreciate it, fellas. And tell tell uh, Tyrone, uh, g- um, congratulations. Thank you, guys. Y'all, you know, I got love for y'all. And anytime y'all want to have me back on the show, just uh, give Absol- me a call. For Absolutely, sure, man. Oh, man. last thing. Did you listen to the Tribe Called Quest album? I have not. Oh, but, uh, my girl Phoenix Carnival told me I need to. I need to cop it. You yeah, need the, to d- the, download it now. We the people <laughs> on your flight. Listen to We the People. You're welcome. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna do that. <laughs> All right, man. So man. I, I, I appreciate the tip, fellas. I get up. Hey, take care, man. All right, bye. So, guys, if you enjoyed that episode, please like and subscribe on iTunes. Share that bad boy, man. Give with us your a, friends. Please comment on it. It helps yeah. a lot when you comment and give a nice rating on iTunes. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, just 
please we appreciate the support and yeah. can and your continued support is always appreciated check out our newsletter we we've been doing giveaways the last two months and we're going to keep it rolling we're going to steamroll that thing we ain't stopping yet we, we ain't stopping the only way you can win on our monthly newsletter giveaway mm-hmm is if you subscribe, that's all you have to do. Go to our Facebook page. There's a link to our newsletter. You just have to type in your first name and your email address. That's or it. go to our website, www.showtheart.com. Go to the blog page. And there's a pay- There's a blog post on there about the newsletter. Check it out. On another note... We got more stuff? What we got? Our contest, we will announce the winners. I have to tally up the points. This mm-hmm. came as a... Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of... It was close? It was pretty close, so nice. we, I gotta I gotta double check the numbers. It was me, guys. Yeah, um, I hate to spoil everything. It was me. I won it, so just hand me my stuff. My so, guys, thank you for listening, and we out. See you soon. Peace. What? <laughs>